Welcome back to SourceFed Nerd, I'm Philip Molina, and in this video we're gonna catch up on all of the rumors out there floating around for the next iPhone. And yeah, it's a lot of months away, but for now, let's get right into what we know so far. Starting off with the name of this next iPhone, considering almost every year the iPhone has alternated numbers with that same number plus the letter S, or the Kryptonian symbol for hope, you might expect next year's iPhone to be called the iPhone 7S, or maybe 7S Plus, but actually reports suggest, nah, -uh, they're gonna call it the iPhone 8. So maybe it's not as fun as if they called it the iPhone Air or iPhone Stealth or iPhone Gary. But still, it's an unexpected jump and the reason they're doing this, well, the S typically means that the phone is just like the previous one, but slightly better. Uh, actually, I think the first S stood for speed or, or something lame like that. But anyway, the iPhone 8 is actually gonna be a huge jump. Calling it the iPhone 7S would be unfair. Also, real talk, the iPhone 7 already basically is the iPhone 6S S, but also the iPhone 8 is gonna be the 10th anniversary iPhone. That's right, the original phone came out in June of 2007. It's gonna be 10 years later. God, do you guys even remember the original iPhone? It didn't have third-party apps. It was only the existing stock apps that you it didn't even have copy and paste. But anywho, uh, Apple is gonna go real big for this 10th anniversary phone and they're gonna pack in so many things that are new and innovative and yeah, I've totally been on other phones for like three years now. Let's talk about the general design of this phone. Rumor has it that the iPhone 8 will bring back the two current sizes with the iPhone 8 still being a slim and slender 4.7 inches and the 8 Plus holding on to that, oh my God, I can't type one-handed on this phone, sorry I'm not a giant, five and a half inches. By the way, if your thumb can reach the far side of the Plus phone, I, I get it, you, you have big hands, good for you. But anyway, it sounds like Apple has listened to normal human beings with normal human hands who sure have trouble reaching into a Pringles can, but also aren't Guillermo del Toro monsters. Because rumor has it Apple might deliver a perfect little Goldilocks model smack in the middle there, coming in around five solid inches. Small enough to hold comfortably, big enough to get the job done. But actually, don't celebrate too soon, because while the new size is a welcome inclusion, it's also rumored that all three sizes will be getting glass backs. Why? Remember the iPhone 4, how pretty it was, and how they were all spiderweb themed? We're not good at glass. Stop doing so much glass. No one is begging for glass. Make it out of airplane black box material, please. Moving on to the other piece of glass, that display. The iPhone 8 is finally, after years of teasing it, most likely getting an OLED display. Why is that important? OLEDs are way better than LCD screens in almost every way. They're thinner, lighter, have better viewing angles, and they don't need nearly as much bezel around the edge. Oh, and they're freaking flexible. We're talking curves, baby. Sure, the Samsung Edge phones have had that for a while. That's it, they, they did it first. I don't have a rebuttal for that. Anyway, rumor does have it that Apple will curve those edges, but also they might not do it on every model. They might save it just for the premium models, which is just one more way to show off how much more money you spend on your phone. And if you're wondering if curved screens actually have any added value, a little. With screens that wrap around the sides a little, the phone can introduce new swipe gestures along the side of the phone, and when it's laid face down, the sides can still glow to notify you of things. Like, a soft green glow maybe means your mom's calling again. Or a bright red glow is an incoming booty call. And that's not the only screen warping Apple's planning, uh, because a new patent just announced suggests Apple might have plans to make completely foldable displays. So you can not only fold down your phone into a smaller, pocketable device, but more interestingly, you could unfold it into a much larger tablet tablet device. Of course, the patent was just awarded, so don't expect this on the iPhone 8, actually, or maybe ever. Apple's putting a lot of focus on upgrading these displays in as many ways as they can. Uh, on top of it being a curved OLED screen, they also are rumored to maybe make the entire front of the phone all screen. No bezel. That would mean no more home button. And considering the iPhone 7 already did away with the mechanical home button, they really actually might do this one. The most interesting technological advancement that they'll have to include if they do that though, they already have the patent for this by the way, they have to be able to recognize fingerprints, what Apple calls Touch ID, through the screen itself. No need for a separate fingerprint scanner. I actually think that is legitimately pretty cool. I know it's a pretty out there idea, but that patent plus the other patent for a fancier taptic engine, meaning it can get more like nuanced with its little like twerking vibrations. That means that they could totally replace the need for that last standout button. Honestly, I don't think it's the most practical thing to do, but it definitely is the like sexiest choice they can make, and we have to do that if we're ever gonna get those really futuristic looking designs. Now, taking a break from the aesthetics, just like every single year, Apple's gonna have a new processor in this thing. This one's gonna be the A11 chip. It's gonna be a lot faster, and it's gonna use a lot less energy than the current chip. Honestly, the most impressive thing about this is the manufacturing process on that chip. It's now taking place in increments of 10 nanometers. You guys, 10 nanometers. 
that's 100 atoms wide. That's how long your fingernails have grown since I said you guys. Science, baby. Other big news that came out this week is that the iPhone 8 will very likely have wireless charging. I bet we're just seeing an extra push for it now because the iPhone 7 is out and when Apple was like, oh, you now just plug your headphones into the lightning jack. And everyone was like, what if I want to charge it at the same time? And Apple was like, shh then they have to push wireless charging because that'll solve that. So wireless charging does already exist on a bunch of other phones and on the Apple Watch, but it's not the kind we really want. In those, you have to lay it on a pad or connect it to a little MagSafe watch adapter. But back in January, it was reported that Apple's trying really hard to make long distance wireless charging a thing. It could charge while it's on the couch or in your pocket. And if it is remotely charging in your pocket, added bonus, you're sterile. One issue they have to work out still is that the further the device is from the power source, the slower it charges. But who cares if it charges slowly if I'm further away? I can always move it closer if I'm in a hurry. Just do it already. Real wireless charging, please. Finally, some features that are just little baby rumors. Uh, it sounds like the cameras aren't gonna change too radically considering the 7 model did have a big change in that the 7 Plus introduced two cameras, one phone. But one update could be giving both of those cameras optical image stabilization, which makes everything all smooth and flowy. And right now it's only on that wide angle lens, not the close up one, even though that's actually the one that needs it a lot more. And the other little baby rumor is about either face recognition or even more likely freaking optical iris scanning. That's what I'm talking about. That's the future. Yes, I know the Samsung Note 7 had that, but also never put that phone near your face unless you want to be a Batman villain forever. This rumor about iris recognition has been around for a while, but it's one of the shakier ones for the iPhone 8. Worst case, it actually sounds very likely by 2018, but here's hoping they squeeze it into next year's phone because damn, that is just cool. Think about it. We're so close to getting to this creepy personalized ads from Minority Report. All right, so that's it for the current status of the iPhone 8 rumors. And yeah, there's a lot of time between now and September 2017 when the phone is rumored to be released. So a lot of this could change. But let's pretend Apple's reading these comments. Which of these features do you actually need them to include? Which ones that I didn't mention would you want them to bring in? Also, which ones do you not care about? The answer is always glass backs. Also, if this futury stuff interests you, then you're a lot like me because I love this shit. But also, check out the video that Whitney and I made about what the future would be like if all of Elon Musk's predictions come true. It's a scary but amazing but terrifying, but awesome place. All right, I've been Philip Molina. Let's talk on Twitter at FEMO or on Snapchat at FEMO Knows. Uh, I'm gonna go practice gripping my five and a half inch uncurved brick. Wish me luck. Bye bye. We need visionaries like Musk to ignore the definition of what is realistic. This, of course, eventually evolves into a romance and later marriage. But a lot of people still view Gwen as Peter's one true love. Okay.